I invite you to hear these assuring words from the 139th Psalm. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely, the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Oh, that you would kill the wicked, O oh God, and that the bloodthirsty would depart from me. Those who speak of you maliciously and lift themselves up against you for evil. Do I not hate those who hate you, O oh Lord? And, and do I not loathe those who rise up against you? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them my enemies. Search me. Oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. God, search our hearts and lead us in your way, in the everlasting way, in the way of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations, the reflections of all of our hearts this day be pleasing and acceptable to you, our Lord, our rock, our maker, our redeemer. Amen. Have you ever been lost? Yeah, you have. Of course, most of the men will admit they haven't. Maybe some of you are lost right now, wondering where you are and how'd you got, how you got here. I've stopped counting the number of times I've been lost. I've been lost in cities. I've been lost in buildings, in hospitals. I've been lost in parking lots, I've been lost in stadiums, I've been lost in mountains, I've been lost in countries. I remember at a fairly young age, I think I was about 12 or so, a few of us in my, own, in my family were traveling through some parts of Europe with my uncle. We weren't doing the train thing at that time, but he was instead driving us. And at some point in the midst of having to pull over every hour or so because his driving made me so carsick, my uncle decided that he knew a shortcut through the mountains of what is now former Yugoslavia. This was long before GPS technology was a reality for us. And there was a point as we were slowly driving through a very desolate area up in the mountains that he asked us to get out of the car and walk 
behind the car because the road, if it was actually a road, was so narrow and the drop-off so steep that it was just best for us not to be in the car. Now, when we did every now and then come across other forms of human life in those mountains, they looked at us like we were aliens. Looks of total disbelief that other human beings were stupid enough to drive on this road. And there was a point in that lostness, even at the, the young, fearless age of 12, that I wondered if my life would continue. Thankfully, it, it did. But when you are lost, you feel small, don't you? You feel really small. You wonder if there is a way out of your lostness. You wonder if, if you would ever, if, if somebody would ever find you and if you, what it would look like if you stayed lost and you start to panic and your mind goes to the worst case scenarios and maybe you cry and, and maybe you cry out to God. And that's just being physically lost. I haven't even mentioned what it's like to be emotionally lost or spiritually lost, lost in grief, lost in doubt, lost in uncertainty. The list goes on and on. All of these forms of being lost are dark. They're very dark. One of the most beautiful psalms, Psalm 139, which we just read, recognizes the darkness, recognizes the reality of, of maybe feeling lost, but the psalmist is also enabled to peer deeply into the heavens and into the depths of human existence and perceive the presence of God. The psalmist actually seems to be in awe at the mystery of God both within oneself and beyond oneself. The more he probes the labyrinth, the labyrinths of his mind, the closer to God he finds himself. Awesome as this experience is for him, however, it never conjures up any sense of fear. What it does is it, it brings him into a deep sense of peace, that God is everywhere. Where can he go where God is not? There's a difference between believing in God as an abstract concept and, and believing that God is personally aware of and intimately involved in our tiny lives every second of every day. No matter how lost you are, how small or irrelevant you, you feel, or how crummy you are, God knows you, God sees you, God is with you, God hears you, God wants you. This is what the psalmist is saying. No matter if you feel it or not, God's presence is inescapable, even in such a massive world. Now, the largest animal on earth is the blue whale. Just the flippers of its tail are larger than most animals. But the blue whale isn't anywhere near as big as a mountain. But if you could take 100 blue whales and put them inside of a huge jar, you could put millions of those jars inside of a hollowed out Mount Everest. But Mount Everest isn't nearly as big as the earth. You could stack, if you could stack 100 Mount Everest on top of one another, it would be just a whisker on the face of the earth. But the earth isn't anywhere near as big as the sun. You could fit one million earths inside of the sun. But the sun isn't nearly as big as a super, a red super giant star called Antares. You could fit 50 million of our suns inside of the star Antares. But Antares isn't anywhere near as big as the Milky Way galaxy. Billions of stars, including superstars like Antares, make up the Milky Way galaxy. But the Milky Way galaxy isn't anywhere near as big as the universe. There are billions, billions of galaxies in the universe. Yet, filled with billions of galaxies, the universe is almost totally empty because the distances from one galaxy to another are beyond human calculation. And then there is you. 
one person with one body and one mind. You are a speck in this entire universe. But a fearfully and wonderfully made speck you are. A human body is such an incredibly precise machine that if our sensors are working normally, you can do the following things. This is what happens with your body. You can feel on your fingertips or your face a pressure that depresses your skin just four hundred thousandths of an inch. You can see a small candle flame from 30 miles away, and you can see 300,000 different colors in the light. You can smell one drop of perfume diffused through a three-room apartment. You can taste four hundredths of an ounce of table salt dissolved in 530 quarts of water. You can feel the weight of a bee's wing falling on your cheek from less than half an inch away. You can gauge the direction of a sound's origin based on three hundred thousandths of a second difference in its arrival from one ear to the other. The body is a physical miracle. But the psalmist also knew that, that we are an intellectual miracle that could only be created by, by the power of God. The information content of the human brain alone is staggering. If you took the information in your brain and wrote it out in English, apparently it would fill 20 million volumes. I bet you didn't know you were that smart, huh? Whether it is our mind or our body, every part of us screams out with the vastness of a God finding home, finding a home in the smallness of each of us. Now, maybe this gives us a new lens through which we can see that every human body is the same in form as the one taken on by God in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. God slipped into skin and lived among us. And as one who built with his hands and, and ate with losers and all kinds of people and kissed lepers and drank wine and washed dirty feet and made mud out of spit and dirt to heal the blind and said, follow me. We see in Jesus that a physical life is also a spiritual life. And even after his torture and death, when he was raised from the tomb, and was not, he was not raised as this sort of disembodied spirit floating around like a ghost. No, at the end of Luke's gospel, as an example, we are told that he ate grilled fish on a beach. It may be in, entirely coincidental, but the key word known or knowledge in this psalm occurs seven times. The number seven, as you know, is a number of completion or, or fullness. And in this case, appropriately reinforces the message that the psalmist is fully and completely known by God. And so are you and I. God knows you and me. God is with you and me. Our lives derive from God. Our lives belong to God. Our, our lives find their true destination in God. You are nothing less than a miracle of flesh knit together by God and animated by God's own breath. Take joy in who you are and whose you are. Ask yourself, where can I go from your presence, O God? Where can I flee from your spirit? You may sometimes think that the universe is conspiring against you or at least that some of the other human being specs are conspiring against you. You may feel lost. You may feel small. But we are offered a different picture in this timeless psalm. It's almost as if the universe is conspiring for you and me, every one of us. Live in that peace. Live in that assurance. You belong to God. Amen.